SwitchBot isn't known for smart lighting. They've always focused on creating unique products with unique options for automating your life. Their new lineup of smart lights don't exactly blow away the competition when it comes to specifications. But when I took a look at them, I was interested in how they work with Home Assistant. These have been built in a very different way than I think we've traditionally seen with smart lighting. Today, I'm gonna take you through the six lights that were released by SwitchBot and how they can be used, especially with Home Assistant. The first one is my personal favorite. It's the Neon Wire Rope Light. It's RGBIC, which to you means it has dynamic effects and it can show multiple light colors at the same time. It'll still do white colors and everything is bright and vibrant. It comes with six little clips for putting it on the wall. What's most impressive and has me the most excited is that it's both flexible and moldable. You can build this into a display just like I've done here. It can wrap around objects to combine new with old. Like everything I'm going to show you today, it has a pretty good number of effects and is capable of matter over Wi-Fi. It has a music mode with a microphone on the controller. All the materials and construction methods they feel really good. This over here is called the Candle Warmer Lamp. It's a completely unique lighting product. Now I've used it with wax melts and with candles and they both work really well. This kind of unlocks fragrance without flame and the light itself is quite warm. So think about that, but it is such a neat way to melt and then unmelt your candles. There's brightness control timers that are both in app and on the little controller. And every time you remelt the wax, you use just a little bit of the scent. So you can use and reuse your candles again and again. And then at some point you can either get new ones, remove a little bit of the wax or add things like essential oils. The lamp itself does have some limitations on the size of candle you can use and it doesn't come with this little plate that you see me using with it. So there are some things to think about, but it's nice that SwitchBot included a second bulb and I will link everything that I used down in the description. SwitchBot also released two floor lamps. I think we've all seen the little pedestal and stick option, but SwitchBot being who they are have included a unique option for placing them horizontally on your floor or on another surface. You can attach these brackets to shelves or walls or to entertainment units and the LED stick itself can be adjusted a little bit to face a few different directions. I placed one of these at the bottom of our bed. It's just providing the right amount of light out of the top and out of the sides and it's a nice light for the evenings. The two models differ only in the type of LED used and I would say, you know, for most people, you're going to want to get the RGB IC model because it provides more dynamic effects and it can have more than one color on the light strip. So this is my RGB IC one. This is kind of the standard model. You'll notice there's only one color on that at any time. They've also released two new light strips and the upgrades on both of these versus previous generations of SwitchBot light strips are pretty extreme. The backing is 3M sticky tape. I like seeing that. And that's like most companies. The light strips turn corners about the same as other light strips in the market. And in the past, you know, SwitchBot had an extremely skinny light strip that was very different. But now they've also upgraded some of the LEDs. And I think this is one of the most important things for us to have a look at. So let me show you that close up. This is our RGB light strip and this is our RGB IC 
light strip. And I just want to explain some of the differences between the technologies and kind of what you're getting with each of these packages. First of all, on the RGB side, still five meters, everything's fine, but you also have uh, things like this little infrared remote and there's a little infrared receiver that is attached to the controller. This does provide kind of an additional option for you to control this if you have an infrared blaster in your home. That's not available on the IC version. The other big difference is kind of what you're seeing right now. The IC version has multiple colors on it at the same time. So the effects are more complex. And actually when you go into the app, there are more options. This is the Halloween effect on that light strip. And this is the Halloween effect on the RGB light strip. You can see it's just changing single colors. This one has a number of colors. You can edit the different effects, create your own. You have lots of options there, but that's a kind of the basis or the big differences between these two from an effect standpoint. But when we're looking physically at these light strips, so here's the RGB one, and that's the RGB LED. Here's our warm white, and then that's kind of our cool white. And when we look at the RGB IC, you can see things are uh, much closer together. This isn't really affecting LED density or anything like that, but you will see a difference in just a second. So here's the RGB IC strip, and you'll notice each of the RGB LEDs it can produce multiple colors inside of these. And that's just to create like an orange or, or whatever. But you'll notice there's two different colors right there. And that is a pretty big difference between that and our other strip. So here's a sunset scene and you can see they're the same colors. Again, you are using multiple of the LEDs inside of here, but when we switch to like a white color, now look at the distance between, okay? This is kind of in the middle. So right now we're at about 2700 Kelvin in terms of the white, okay? And when you look at the way that color is being reproduced on the RGB light strip, it's quite different. You're using three LEDs they each have a, a little bit. You can see the warm white is doing most of the work. Over here, we have uh, clearly just a single one of these LEDs doing the work. And that's, that's kind of what we would uh, expect. Now look at the difference between 2700 Kelvin. This is just a great example. You're just gonna find that the reproduction is a little better when you're using an RGB IC like that. All the materials, the way they've built these products, the install or the construction of them, and just the general quality is very high. And these are all a lot better than previous SwitchBot lighting products in a number of ways. The biggest gap that they have with everything is in their app. It's not that the app is bad and actually control, it's very easy, but SwitchBot could do a little more from the effect standpoint. And I think now with RGB IC and a set of these devices, they can do even more. That's the biggest thing you'll miss versus some of their competitors. But as I said, the specs for these lights are good, just not industry leading. And where I think the value comes in is how you can use them and the pricing structure. 2025, 2026, I'm not sure we're gonna see a lot of light strips in that $50 range for a five meter strip. And with the upgrades to the LEDs here versus previous generations, feels like a good budget option for a lot of people. Now the only product that feels a little more expensive than maybe it needs to be, is the candle warmer lamp. But for those of you with home assistant working in your home, the value of these products comes up considerably versus the options from Govi and in, even in some cases, you know, the options from companies like Philips Hue. There are four methods for integrating these products with Home Assistant. The first is the standard cloud integration, which most Home Assistant users aren't gonna wanna use all the time, but they do provide all the features of these lights 
so it's good to have that as a backup. The second is to use the matter over Wi-Fi option, which provides you basic control of these lights in your home. And it's a local option, so no internet is required, very easy to set up. The non-RGB IC devices come with an infrared remote and they therefore have an infrared receiver next to the control box. This is an excellent option for many people to use with Home Assistant or for that matter, other smart home platforms that have an IR blaster. But the final option is my personal favorite and I think it really sets SwitchBot way ahead of many other companies. I unlocked this option in my home a while ago. I spent about 15 bucks and I got three of these little Bluetooth proxies. It took me about 10 minutes to build each one of these and get them fully working. And they provide direct Bluetooth control of almost every SwitchBot product out there today. They also let you use your SwitchBot lights with all of their different effects and that provides all kinds of automation options for you. This method is local and it will work even when the internet is down. It's been a quick way to control all of these lights and with access to the full Home Assistant automation engine, you can use many of the effects and these unique lights to not only make your home look nice, but to be useful lighting features. Getting out of bed having your floor lighting come on so you can see at night but not disturb our significant other. It's very easy to do with Home Assistant and many of these lights. Turning the candle warmer on when someone's in the room and it's the evening and it's dark, again, this is a very easy automation to make with a good presence sensor. Turning on accent lighting around our television when it turns on is easy to do with a power monitoring smart plug. And one of the most interesting options I think is this alarm effect that I think most smart home lighting makers have kind of missed out on. You can turn this on to let your whole household know when a leak has occurred or when the security system has been breached. And all of these lights can be coordinated with the same lighting effect. Although keep in mind, using a Bluetooth proxy, that means kind of one command's going out at a time, so they won't be exactly lined up. You'll have to temper your expectations for a perfect set of flowing automated lights. And if you do that, you'll be happy with these. Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to connect these to Home Assistant. Once you have one of those Bluetooth proxies, and then I'm gonna show you a little demo in uh, our bedroom where we've put a lot of these lights. I'm here in Home Assistant and I wanna show you just how easy it is to add one of these into Home Assistant. So this is my little Bluetooth proxy and I have three of them throughout my home and they're kind of servicing the whole thing. And because I've already installed SwitchBot uh, Bluetooth as an integration, so you can add integration, you can start to look for uh, SwitchBot and when you go in there, you can see SwitchBot Bluetooth, you can see the Add Matter device, you've got all these options, but it's already discovered the Strip Light 3. And it's discovering it as a Bluetooth device because it's in range of this. So I'm just gonna hit Add. And now generally you get this question about, hey, you gotta put in your credentials in order to get it added. I put in those credentials. I can place this in an area. I can rename it, whatever I'd like. And then I'm good to hit finish. And now I have just the basic controls here, but you can see it's a very quick control between these. And I do have a diagnostic entity if I want for a Bluetooth signal. But when I go into scenes or automations, I have a little more that I can do. So let's use the device as an action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an action. I'm gonna hit light. I'm gonna hit turn on and then you can see I get all these advanced options. We're gonna choose the device and I'm gonna call it strip light and here's the, the little Bluetooth tag. Now, if I'd like, I can put in color, color temperature, brightness. I can adjust the brightness by a step every time I run this. So let's slightly turn up. Let's go, uh, oh, maybe not 42%. 
let's go about 9% up. And then I can type in an effect. So let's say we had a light switch that we wanted to control this with. Whenever it's turned on, we're gonna turn on that light and change it to that mode. I'm just gonna hit uh, the save so that I can run the actions. So now we've sent, and you saw it, we sent that action to this and now it's running that scene. Now I've got a lot of little tricks and little things packed into this room, but we gotta get back to the dark. One of the floor lamps I have placed kind of behind the, the headboard there on the ground and that lets me get lots of effects, but just a basic light Look at what it does around the edge of the room. It's like an extra LED strip. And I just love how that looks around the room. And then obviously around the bed frame. Let's turn on the TV. And then you'll notice all the lights coming on around the television. Nice simple automation just based off of a power monitoring smart plug. And it's not just those two. I've tucked one of the neon rope lights in here. So that's actually lighting up the ground in front of the TV and then we've got the two there. And obviously I can make adjustments in terms of colors. Back there is one of the candle warmer lamps and Actually, I've got one on my side. They're actually making really nice reading lights. Uh, and obviously, you're getting uh, kind of your candles melted. Now, I'm going to show you this for when we get out of bed here in the evening. And you're going to see how this goes. So, right here, you're going to see that little light. And that comes on. And you can also see that under the bed has come on right there. So we have lighting coming on. And then obviously if I walk away, and there it goes. As I walk away, uh, you can see the light turns off and that's what you want. So just as people are getting out of bed, we can have lighting that's gonna help them, but not necessarily disturb the other person. So a couple of motion sensors and a couple of easy automations. As I release this video though, not every one of these six products work through that Bluetooth method. But please understand that SwitchBot is continuing to add more of their products to that method. It's four out of the six that I show you today and actually just last week they added two more of them. So I'm betting by the time you get any of these products in your home that that option will be there for you with all of them. I'm enjoying them. And uh, you know, if you wanna use that Bluetooth method, which I have found excellent, check out the video that's up on screen right now. It'll teach you how to do that for less than $10 a piece. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, live smart.